And now, I want you to have faith. Do you believe that I can? Or you believe that I will? It will happen, and when that happens, it will be my pleasure to hear what God will do in your life. It happened to me. I was in a situation where there was no help. None. Not even, not even my parents. But one day, God woke me up in the morning, knocked my heart, and He said, Now, son, do you have any help? I said, No, Lord, except you. And from that day on, I practiced faith. And He started to be this. Abraham's faith was foreshadowed. Number two, Abraham's faith was forecasted. He said, God will. It is a forecast. God is not doing anything yet. He was still going over Isaac, but because he said, God will, then God provided himself land. Now, before I go, I still have like 20 minutes to go. When we say that faith is foreshadowed, meaning God will, I'll give you a situation so that you would get the idea. Let's say, for example, you don't have a job, okay? Like some of our brothers and sisters are looking for a job. You don't have a job. You don't know what will happen next in the future, all right? A foreshadow faith is something like this. I know I don't have a job now. It's very hard to make both ends meet. I have bills to be paid. But I believe God will give me provisions to pay all my bills. God will. Alright? During these past few quarters in our, in our church, I was thinking of how I would, you know, raise funds to sustain our expenses. Office expenses, our expenses, my gasoline, everything. I was thinking of God, where am I going to get this? <clears throat> so I knew that one day, I said, God, even I exert all my effort with this kind of expenses I have, I cannot get this. So I knelt down and trusted Him. You know, I put everything to the, to the throne of God. You know what happened after that? Week after week, provision comes in from nowhere. I said, God, you're surprising me. You're surprising me. Once you put your faith in God, you foreshadow and you say, God will. Not God can. God will. And that's my faith. God will. Amen. Now watch this. Even you say God will, you have to have a basis. Basis. I'll give you two bases of this. When you forecast a weather, weather forecast, they don't forecast without a basis. Now this might be Something you have to think of. Every time you practice forecast faith, there should be a basis. I will give you an example of this. Uh, something that you base on. First, you have to practice forecast faith based on what God did in the past. I'll give you an example to this. Let's say, for example, this chair... One day, the other day, I sat on this chair and it carried me 100%. Even if I lift up my legs, okay? If I come here the uh, next Sunday, what would I think of this chair? Will this still carry me on? Yes or no? Why? Because I proved this last week. Right? I proved this last week. So when I go back, I will just sit down and boom! But if there will be a new chair here, let's say a brand new chair, before I go like this, I have to check it out if that will carry me. Oh, there's a funny story happened in the Philippines. It was a graduation day. It's really funny. 50% of the congregation laughed at our guest speaker. He's a very high dignified man from Accelerated Christian Education. It's the fault of the custodian of the church. The story goes like this. We had two chairs 
uh, the other like this, just exactly like this. One of the chairs in the congregation uh, had a broken underneath board like this. It was broken. It was broken, okay? So if you sat, sit down on that broken chair, it will be divided into half, and you will go like this. Boop! <coughs> Inside the chair. It will be broken. Bro break into two like this, and you will shoot inside the chair. Alright? Norman, don't laugh yet. This is what happened. The custodian didn't know that what he carried on the altar was the broken chair. So he arranged the chair like this, and then one of the chairs that he didn't notice that that was the broken one, he put it on the altar like this. And the pastor of the church sat on the other side, and he called the speaker of the graduation day, to sit on that chair. <laughs> and the way he sat in that chair is like this, uh, boom, boom, he shook like this. And he could not get out for two minutes. We did the best we could do, do like this. And while we're doing this, the congregation was laughing. Now after the service, we had a meeting. The whole staff, 50 people staff, the only absent is the custodian. It was the custodian wasn't there. And the pastor asked, who set up the chairs this morning? No one was speaking. The other one softly said, Pastor, which was the custodian? Where is the custodian? Nowhere to be found. <laughs> It was his fault. Now, that's only an example, but mind you this. If you have faith based on what God did on the past, you can foreshadow what will happen next. Okay, this is what, this is the logic. If God sustained me in the past, will He sustain me in the future? Yes or no? Mm. Yes. That is forecasting faith. If every February there is snow falling down the ground, what do you think will happen next February? Will there be sunshine? Will it rain? Now you see what God is saying, what, what Abraham is saying is this. When God told me that I will have a son. He did. Gave me a son. Now he's telling me that I will be, I will have a, I will have children like the sun of the sea. Like the stars in the sky. I have only one son and that is Isaac. Ah, if you promise me that I will be the father of many nations and I have only one son. Therefore, this son will live, he will not die. So no matter how much God will tell me to offer my son Isaac, I would say, son, don't worry. God promised me that I will be the father of many nations and you will be spared. Oh. That's what I'm saying about the foreshadow of faith based on what God did in the past. God already did many things to Abraham. And so he said, if God did this in the past, he will do this in the future. And for you Christians may say this, not only in your past, but in your present, you can base your faith. Is God leaving you alone in the present? The answer is no. Did God leave you in the past? The answer is no. So A plus A equals B. If God did not leave me in the past, and God not leaving me in the present, what would happen in the future? God will not leave you, neither in the future. The most frightening thing in life is not the past, not the present. The most frightening thing in life is always the future. What would happen to my family? What would happen to my children? What would happen to me? What if, what if, what if? Now let's go to the weather forecast. God, you did this in the past. You provided me in the present. Oh, oh. I know what will happen in the future. It's like A plus A plus B. It's the same thing. 
God said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. God promises to Abraham was forecasted. It was foretold. When God said, I sh it shall be that all families of the earth will be blessed. In you, the stars, you'll be like the stars, as, uh, the numbers of the stars in heaven. So thy shall see thee. Thou shalt be the father of many nations. And so therefore, based on what God did in the past, God says, uh, Abraham said, I, no, Abraham will be spared. Oh, Asaph will be spared. Number three, Abraham's faith has a foundation. Abraham's faith has a foundation. It's not only forecasted, that it has a foundation. Okay, I will spend a few minutes in this. Ten minutes in this last point. Most of the faith, faith that we practice, most of the faith, faith we practice has no basis. We just say, I believe. I believe. I believe. But no basis. Let's say, the song, I believe for every drop of rain that falls, the flower grows. I believe that somewhere, you know, those are believed that has no basis. It's just believe. Okay? When that preacher believed that his daughter will not die, that faith had no basis. Nothing. A real scriptural faith has a basis. Where do we base our faith? In the Bible, when Abraham offered his son Isaac, Abraham based his faith on the word of Jehovah. When Jehovah said, you shall be the father of many nations, and so when he offered Isaac in Mount Moriah, he based his faith that God will provide, he based it on the promises of the word of God that God said you will be the father of many nations. Based on that, he said, I will not die. So therefore, I would say Abraham's faith was founded on the word of God himself. Now follow me here. Follow me. Every time you believe that God will do something in your life, 100%, you must be able, you must be able to find that. Yeah. Pastor, I will not study, but I will pass my exam. Okay, find it here. Can you find it here? <laughs> oh, Pastor, without my job, uh, without applying for a job, my family will be provided by the Lord. I will not apply for a job. I'll just sit down and watch TV. Is, can you find it here? <laughs> can you find it? No. It should be based on the word of God. God said, no work, no meat. So faith, that God will provide even if you don't work, it's not here. Will, we, will the man have said, my daughter will be here even without the doctor? Is that here? No, it's not here. According to James, if any of you are sick, call the elders for pray for him and anointed him with oil. There should be medicine. So this unscriptural faith is being spread all throughout the world. Faking faith. Faking faith. Oh, I can live alone without anybody to help me. Oh, that's not in the Bible. The basis should be the Word of God. You know, there's a story in the book of Luke chapter 7 when the centurion's servant is, uh, was sick in chapter 7 and the centurion saw the Lord Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ was about to go to the centurion's house. You know what happened next? Why? What did the centurion say to the Lord Jesus Christ? Still remember the story? The centurion said, Lord, you don't have to go into my house. Just what? Just what? Just, Just say the word. 
and he will get healed. And Jesus said, I cannot find this kind of faith not in Israel. You know the faith that just say the word. He based his faith on the word of Jesus Christ. Don't you know in the book of Hebrews it says, the worlds were framed by the word of God. And if our faith is not based on the word, it is not faith. But when we base our faith based on the word, then it is a scriptural faith. i give you an example again. When the centurion said, no, Lord, just say the word. And Jesus said, he's healed. On that same hour, he went back. On that same hour, he asked, what time was he healed? He said, the same hour when Jesus Christ said, you're healed. Now, based on that, everything that we do, that faith is needed to be practiced, you must be able to pinpoint in the Bible where you base it. If you cannot pinpoint in the Bible where you base your faith, it's not faith. You don't please God. I was talking to a brother of ours. I said, you know, brother, I will tell you the real problem of you and your family is not really money. It's priority. I showed him Matthew chapter 3. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things shall be added unto thee. Now you're seeking something else. Now how would you say that God will provide if what you practice is not based on the Bible? You should be able to practice your faith based on the scripture. When I surrendered myself full time in the ministry, I was only 20, 20 years old time in the ministry you know the first thing I worried about is the financial need was the financial need of my mother and my father I was asking God I said God how would my father and mother be provided if I will go full time in Bible school and full time in the ministry I attended the conference that day and on that conference it was a conference asking people to surrender themselves full time in the ministry to be a Bible school student and I was there sitting in the service and the preacher said if you don't think that God will provide your need you are not called in the ministry and so I was shocked I said I uh, uh, God are you really calling me I have to, to get right my faith so when my fa faith started to get into my heart that God can provide, I could not step on the altar and pray for surrendering myself. Not until during the invitation, started to play uh, singing the invitation of music, and I changed my God can to God will. Said, God, I know that you will provide for my family, for my father, for my mother. They are old, and I'm the only one working to provide the need. And I will be resigning from my job and be a full-time student and full-time minister in the church. In the church, why would you? Why would a person like me be called? So I prayed on the altar and asked God. First few weeks, I was really, really scared. But few months after that, we had no house, by the way, that day, that that, that year, we had no house. Right after I surrendered myself in the ministry forecasting my faith that God will provide for my parents. My brother from Bahrain came back home. I was surprised. He came back to the Philippines with a lot of money. He said this, I have money. I don't know where to, to put my money in. I don't want to put my money in the back in the Philippines, he said. You know what he said? Can you look for a house? I want to buy a house for mommy and daddy. Oh! I was so, so shocked. And are you going to buy a house for mommy and daddy? Yes. So I'm free. He bought a house for my mom and dad. When he went back to Bahrain, he told me, tell me how much 
mom and dad need every day to provide everything for their needs. I gave him a calculator, sent it by me. And from that day on, I'm free. God provided me. You know, not until we practice the scriptural faith, we will not see that God will provide. He based his faith on the Word of God. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God. And if you will ask me every time I would read the Bible about faith, I always give the illustration of a little girl in the ship. The whole crowd we're scared because the girl just is sitting down, lying down, when the ship is being tossed to and fro by the winds and the storms. And the little girl was just lying down and sleeping. So people woke, woke her up and said, Little girl, this ship is going to sink. Wake up and save yourself. And the girl just woke up and said, What? The ship is in the storm? No, I, I, it will be okay. And the people said, why do you say that it will be okay? We are in the midst of the storm. And she said, well, the captain of the ship is my father. I've been traveling with her, uh, with him, every time he travels around the world. And I'm sure we will be saved. Now, like children to our Father in heaven, even if the world is in chaos, we can say, my father is the captain. We will be saved. Is your family in trouble? Is it being shaped by the storms? Can you say that same kind of faith? God will. Not God can. God will. Young people, may I say this to you today? Let these words be in your minds and heart till you get to the adult life and your family life one day will be shaken by storms and you practice the same faith your parents are practicing today. A biblical, biblical kind of faith that God will. God will. That is the biblical faith that Abraham practiced. So when the Bible was written in the book of Hebrews, the whole of faith is there. One of those persons that you can find in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 is Abraham, the man of faith. Now if you don't practice this yet, I'm sure one day God wants to be pleased. And God will place you in a situation where there is no one around to help you, only Him. Then. You will come to realize and go back to this message and say, I have to practice the scriptural faith that God will provide. Heavenly Father, I did my best to convey to these people, to your people, the scriptural faith. Forgive us because sometimes we practice the unscriptural kind of faith. The only thing that can please you, Father, is faith. For without faith, it is impossible to please you. No wonder there are Christians today with their testimony testifying to me right in my ear how it seems to be difficult to live a Christian life. No wonder because they are in the situation where in God is looking for faith. And this faith, dear Father, needs to be scriptural. Faith that can be found in the Bible. You are pleased with faith. Just like the little girl who trusted her father that he is the captain and everything will be alright. Help us to be like that girl. We'll always say in the midst of trouble, in the midst of confusion, in the midst of storms and suffering, we stand 
with freedom in the heart to say that everything will be all right. Because God is the captain. This very moment, dear Father, we're asking you to bring your children, those who have faith, that everything will be all right. Bring them to the altar and say the word, God, I believe that you will. I believe that you will. While we sing the invitation of music, just as I am, or I surrender all, may I invite every one of you who have this kind of faith to bind our hearts together and pray to the Lord and tell Him, God, I believe that you will. Not you can, but you will. Don't wait for the time where God will set you in a situation wherein you have to choose faith. Now is the time. Don't wait for a situation where God will say, Now, is there anybody who would help you? No one will except me, God will say. Don't wait for that time. I guess today is the time wherein you can trust God 100%. Say, God, this very moment, even before that day, that you will put me in this a situation wherein I will say, God will. Now I will tell you, you will. By faith, you will. Shall we come to Him in faith? Right here at the altar, not there on the chair. Faith is stepping forward in the Mount Moriah and giving your faith at the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's come together.